The world-class sailing traditions, stately seaside mansions, prestigious yacht clubs, and Newport, Rhode Island's National Sailing Hall of Fame are a long ways from Chicago's South Side, where sailing on Lake Michigan was once considered a world away for Bill Pinckney. My presence here confirms that those sailors, past and present, recreational and professional, who look like me, are not regarded as an anomaly, but are rather a part of the greater sailing community. Captain Bill Pinckney's historic induction as the first African-American into the National Sailing Hall of Fame was as much about navigating life as it was about sailing. The sea doesn't care what your economic status is, your religion, your nationality, your sex. It doesn't care what you think. It cares one thing. I am the sea. Bill Pinckney chronicled his historic solo sail around the world, the first African-American to do it the hard way around the Great Southern Capes in his 1992 video diary and documentary. It's been very, very rough. For seven days, I've had nothing but bad weather. Uh, the boat's been knocked on its side a couple of times. Raised on Chicago's South Side in a fatherless home, often on public assistance, and only attending inner city public schools, Bill Pinckney's sailing accomplishments are all the more extraordinary. The fact that I was black meant that statistically, before I was 21, I would be either killed from a crime of violence, on drugs, or incarcerated. Now, I never believed the statistics. At 86, he's now retired in Puerto Rico, where he first learned how to sail small cargo skiffs while stationed here with the Navy in the 50s. But I read this book entitled Called It Courage, about a young man who was an outcast uh, with people in his island in Polynesia. I held that as my, my dream for a great adventure in my life. After a successful career as a cosmetics executive, Bill Pinckney decided to sail around the world in 1990, while in his mid-50s, as a legacy for his grandchildren, and to teach inner city students back at his former elementary school how far they could go with a basic education and by making a commitment, like he named his boat, donated by other sailors and businessmen. The lesson plans he created with Chicago educators eventually connected his voyage with nearly 30,000 students throughout the country. I had one day when I made almost 140 miles in a day. My average speed for that day is a number that you might want to figure out. The thing I tried to show in my trip was that the things you use and learn every day, the things you learn in the first 12 years of school, come into play every single day. Roger that. Give me two to four. Bill Pinckney added to his sailing legacy as the first captain of the Amistad schooner replica for teaching the sailing history of the slave trade and taking teachers to Africa for a middle passage crossing from Senegal to the Americas, starting from the door of no return, the slaves pass through. Well, that was my whole idea. Is, is to give that juxtaposition to get a, a real, a, a visceral appreciation of that distance, of that time, of that removal, that quantum leap from Africa to America, ancestrally as a cargo, contemporarily as the master. Now a member of the prestigious New York Yacht Club, he thinks sailing often gets a bad rap for being confused with yachting as an elitist recreation, exclusive to those with more privileged backgrounds than his. But I'm very proud that I am a member of that ethnic group who has been part of the sea all along the African coast, all along the coast of the United States, because the first people and the watermen in this country were slaves. When you think of that journey you made from Southside Chicago to here in Newport, the New York Yacht Club, the National Sailing Hall of Fame, it seems like uh, almost like going to the moon for where, where and how you grew up. I had a dream of, as a kid of wanting to be uh, an adventurer. I sat on the Chicago side of Lake Michigan and wondered what was on the other side. And 
that really started my curiosity about water and sailing. And you saw what was on the other side of Lake Michigan. You saw what was on the other side of the horizon all the way around the world, 32,000 miles. That was right. Uh, it was, there's always a horizon. No matter how far you go, you're always going to have a horizon to